Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is so good to be back with you again on tonight. And I know that you say, well, Prophet Johnson, where you been? It's been a long time coming, this and that and everything and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, all is well concerning you and I. And all I can say is a uh, happy belated Father's Day to all you father rights out there. There are many voices and none are without signification. In other words, there are many voices that means a lot of things, says a lot of things, declares a lot of things, but there are not many fathers. You see, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I came that you might have life and more and life more abundantly. You see, we ought to rightfully divide the word of truth among each other, as in the feed each other, lift up each other. Not tear each other down. But oh, what can I say to you and I? That we are knowing the truth. And the truth is setting us free. The only way up is out. There is no other way. Regardless of how you cut it, how you slice it, or how we may dress it up. There's only one way out. And that's up. And that's all there is to it. So, good to be back with you again. First Corinthians, I know you say Prophet Johnson, we're coming out of a, what was that? Do the robbery the over there and exhortation and dealing with the idolatry of it all. And, and we'll probably go back and flip flop on a little bit of it. Just getting back. But happy Father's Day belated to all of you fatherites out there. Let's get going. The only way up is out. First Corinthians chapter number 14. Following verse number one, Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. God is love. So therefore, the love of many in the last days have done what? Wax cold. Following after charity, love. And desire spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. What has happened to the gifts in today's time? Only personalized. For each individual to set their own standard. So what we have is spiritual cliche. Spiritual clicks. Spiritual witchcraft. I mean <laughs> witchcraft. Witchcraft. We have it everywhere now. Oh, how are the mighty fallen? Name brand preachers stumbling all over the place. Prophets under fire. The gift is we know, we know not who, what, when, or where it's coming from. So what do we see? An imbalance in the church, in nature, in life. For in the last days, many would run to and fro. Daniel, knowledge would be on an increase. They would give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of Dealing with things 
that are out of this world coming into this world. And I've always told y'all no such thing as a UFO. Demons are real. Hell is real. The supernatural is real. Spirits are real. But oh, you don't see it yet. This stuff is in manifestation right now. The events and the closing of the end time. You see, I've got to share something with you guys. I've got to share a dream, or I got a couple of dreams just recently. My God! And you talking about a blow away segment of life. Remember, I am the truth teller, the dreamer of dreams. I don't have to put it here or say it there. Because why? I'm old and wise enough to know the timing of God when it comes to his people. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, verse number 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Speak to the end times as the end time prophet or prophetess. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh unto me, not unto men. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. This is why the enemy hates your other language. They can call it your spiritual language. The devil's got spiritual languages. You best know that he speaketh unto God in an unknown tongue, language that is from the ancients. Verse number three. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification. Do you see that word? He that prophesy it, what does he do? He speak it unto man. For what? Edification. Now let's look at this. Because a lot of times we will miss God because we're too busy judging. When you prophesy, when you speak, you go with okadomia, okadomio, which means to build up edification. Do you see it? When we speak to you, our job is oakodomi, which means to build, the act of building. This is the individual to build in the process and to take them hence beyond where they are. Prophecy! Do you hear me? It's also that which is built so you speak upon the greater of it. The building of edifice, which means edification. You will see it next. It means the ability to speak spiritual prophet, see, or spiritual prophet and advancement to the individual. It's deal with a house, a dwelling, a belonging to the house, relative, sojourner, which means to dwell or one who builds a house or a building to build a bone. So when you speak, make sure you're building a bone and not just cutting down. 
People are going through hell and high water everywhere. And the last thing that we need is a broken prophecy. But because of our sins, be sure your sin will find you out. If a brother is overtaken in a fault, you with your spiritual restore such a one with the spirit of meekness considering thyself. And that's what we forget about our own self. Lest thou be also tempted. He that prophesied speaketh unto men we're in 1 Corinthians 14 and 1 and 14 and 3, edification, exhortation, exhortation. Do you hear me? Let's look at exhortation, okay? Exhortation. Here it is, right here. Exhortation, which is the ability or that act of calling towards or hither to help, paraclesia, which is the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, which means to call alongside and to exist and to the brokenness of one's life to assist in the brokenness of an individual. That's the paraclesia. That's the Holy Spirit. I will not leave you confident, brother, but I will send you a comforter that not only shall he be with you, paraclete, but he shall be in you, paraclesia. You see, God knows the longing, the hurt, the rendering, the failures, the forces of our inability to escape sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. For I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He that come unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. For God is love. Cast your cares upon me. For I care for you. Cast your burdens upon me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I am the bread of life. I, he that cometh down from heaven that gave his life unto the world. So where are we in the divisions of Christianity, in the division of marketing, of name calling, of destruction? We can call it all out. Adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, rape, incest, Fallen angels, pastors, prophets, evangelists, let's call them out by name. The prostitutes and the pimps, the sports events of the lesbian women and the homosexual men, call them out. The church anniversaries, appreciation, pastors, denominations. Call them out. The dog with the woman. The woman with the donkey. The man with the dog. Call them out. The chickens in the duck. Call them out. And when we're all said and done, where does your prophecy stand? Call out the next president. Call out Biden. Call out Harris taking the baton. Call out Obama as the Antichrist. Call out Trump as the racist. Call us all out 
for we are all doomed by the epitome of our, of our souls, by the judgment of unrighteousness and the judgment of righteousness. Call out the money. Say what we will die for. Say what they live for. Call out lust, sin, sex, drugs, alcohol, marijuana, meth, hemp. Call out methamphetamine, fentanyl. Call it out. And when you get through calling it, make sure you live above and beyond it. You see. Because we can justify it. We can dress it up. And we can say that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We can fix it and fixate it. No matter what they say, it's going to come down to one thing. Your pastor is not going to be in heaven or hell to stand before you with God. Your great expositors, your prophets, and your fear mongers, and your United States lovers and haters, both Democrat and Republican, will not stand before you in the presence of the great Yahweh, Yahweh, Yah, El, Elohim. They will not be there in the presence of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He will judge you as your individual words and your thought. For we all must give an account for every idle word. We must give an account for every action, for every thought, for every being, for every intrusiveness, for every hatred, for every racism. But I tell you now, shit, speak as you will. Speak as you may, humans of mankind. You, no matter how great you are, no matter your viewers, no matter your anointing, your mat no matter your purpose or your agenda, to hell with your money. You have got to come through. Yeshua's plan, Yah's plan, which is hatred and racism. You're going to have to deal with it in all the nations, in all the countries, in all the worlds. For with love and kindness have I drawn thee. And after what evil and murder, you must deal with preacher, prophetess, prophet, Apostle, you must deal with it. Hatred and racism. You got to deal with it in America. You got to deal with it in the nations. You got to deal with it in sin because it was the sin of hatred. It was the sin of racism that is destroying this nation through the slaves, through the cross, through those that are beyond the great rivers of Ethiopia and stand and having done all the stand stand therefore because you shall know the truth and the truth shall set and make you free for the only way up is out and we've got to get back to it you can call it but we got to live it you know what it's like and you know how Christians to live holy, to live free, and to know God. You want to dance with me? Hot rods of Christianity. You want to dance with a boy that at six and seven years old knew from the beginning in the projects of Mississippi that ate government cheese, government prunes, powdered eggs. You want to deal with a poor boy from Mississippi 
that God has shown dreams and visions from the day that he was born? And you think you got something? Please! Humans, female, male, species of mankind, I will share with you indirectly a dream or dreams that Father recently showed me while I've been absent from y'all and talk that stuff all you want. Man, am I getting ready to run. What are we, where are we? Exhortation? Exhortation? Here it is. If I can figure out where I am. Exhortation is the paraclesia, the act or toward calling forth hither to help. It is like the begging or the yearning in the spirit. Do you hear me? Encouragement towards the virtue. Jesus said, who touched me? Lord, everybody is around you. I feel that the virtue has gone out of me. The exhortation of someone else have received my word. Do you hear me? Which deals with the paraclesia, the Holy Spirit, which is called alongside inside of your short sack to help you from the betain of God, the mind of God when you did not exist. Here's the admonition and the encouragement of who we are. Here's the purpose, shape, of strengthening and establishing the believer's possession of redemption. Our job is to not work for the money. It's not by works, but it's by faith. It is the gift of God, lest any man shall boast. But what we do is that we use the paraclesia, the exhortation, which is the call alongside to establish the believer's possession of redemption, which means I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Not looking back and having my hands not fit to the plow for he that looked back is not fit for the kingdom of God. We press toward the mark of that prize, redemption. And we can play the church game because the church is over. The church is dead. The church is in up. The church is a wolf, a wolf. The church is a wolf, cheap, cheap clothing, cheap clothing, playing the game of the money, the diamonds. Play it! Anniversaries of appreciation. Play it! Play your games! But this is an individual warfare and an individual walk and an individual now calling. The purpose is set. The time is not long. 2024 is inevitable. There is a great marching army on the left and a great marching army on the right. The Democrats, Republicans, preparing themselves for battle. Also in the spirit realm, good and evil. Those things which is of lawlessness, murder, sex, traps, drugs, a battle and in battle on one side abortion. Those things that are saying God Almighty, Alpha, Omega, beginning, end. That which is, was, and is to come is setting himself with the angelic host to do battle against the contrary spirits of Satan as we war and we rage towards an election of an unidentified identity of a man and of a woman that cannot fit the promise.
promises of who the true children of Israel are. Wowee! And you want to play? Uh, let's play. Uh, humans. Uh, species. Of uh, mankind. Possess your redemption. Which is the purpose. Of which is to strengthen the faith. If I can't strengthen you, why am I tearing you down? You think I don't know about those people? We know about them. They're in it for money. We don't have to call their names. God will deal with them. Who are you lifting up? Besides who you tearing down and what you tearing down. No, tear me down. Tear me down. Look at the record. Don't care. The lies cannot outlive the truth. You see, because I've told you, you are looking at the sinner. You are looking at him. I'm from the projects of Mississippi. So don't you tell me about sex, drugs, rock and roll, gambling, smoking, drinking. Hank, let's talk about your daddy. Tell me how Miss Ellie loved that man. Well, let's break out the ball of horse up now. Talk about the gambling cowboy man. Please, Christian. Living in your high rises, your apartments, your nice, relevant rural areas. Your grid haven't been cut. Your ground haven't been shaken. There are no more prophecy about hurricane, fires, tornado, whatever, uh, lava, uh, flow, uh, volcano. There's no more prophecy. The only thing you got to watch out for is John Henry. You better watch John Henry. Let me get past this so I can get to a stopping point. Share my dream with y'all. I'm through with that part. I'm through with that part because uh, I'm through with that part. And that's all there is to it. So let, let's go back to, um, where are we at? Good, good enough. Good enough. So this is start to finish. And I want to. Make sure that you, you guys hear this in closing because as they say, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Remember, the last thing is comfort. They speak to the comfort of the individual, which means to make sure that you and I both, regardless of what they're going through, be able to feel and to sense what they're feeling and sensing. Comfort is easy. It's going to be all right. I'm with you. The Lord is our shepherd. God didn't bring us here to lead us. Quoting those scriptures, with his stripes, by his stripes, calling those Comfort! Put a pillow. Just like an ambulance do when a person is hurt. You see, in, in closing in this part, I don't want to mess with this, but he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself, but he that prophesied edified the church. You see, God knows how to convict and to convince of sin. We can kill them to hell and back, but it don't make us no better. In closing, I told you I want to share with you a dream. I'll share with you just one tonight. 
I won't have time to share both. In this dream, we was all like at a carnival. The whole world, whole glory, was like a carnival. There was this giant merry-go-round, not merry-go-round, Ferris wheel. Merry-go-round on the ground, Ferris wheel in there. Long story short, I got to hurry. There was people in line to get on this fairy wheel because everybody was seeking joy and pleasure in the things of the world. I was in line. And the merry-go-round had the seats there. Nice seats. I watched the people get in the seats then buckle themselves down, but they were the prominent people. The governors, the senators, your Hollywood, your CEOs, your, your lawyers, your crooked judges, and, and, and all of those deceivers. You see, rich folks were sitting in the seat. Poor folks like me, they had bars on the outside of the merry-go-round. I've never seen a merry-go-round, not a merry-go-round, a Ferris wheel like it. But they had bars to where everybody else, I get this, had to grab a hold to a bar while the other people sat down strapped in. And we had to grab a hold to the bar. And I'm thinking, well, God, this is not safe. You know, in the dream, you're just going with the flow. So I watch young people grab the bar. I watch old people grab the bar. And I grab the bar on the outside of that Ferris wheel. And that thing started turning, and as it started turning, in our mind, and in everybody's mind, to those people it was natural, to those people it was normal. They, it didn't bother them. But I said, God, if it turned fast, we fall off. I said, we got to have strength to hold on. I wrapped my legs around the bars. I wrapped my arms around the bars as it began to go slow and it one to three miles per hour. And as it turned, I saw the world and I saw and I looked down and I saw everybody in the world holding on to the outside of the bar that didn't have the riches, that didn't have the wealth, that didn't have the pleasure. And they was enjoying it as I was hanging on for dear life. They was living a complacent life, a normal life. But I knew that if I fell off of that Ferris wheel, it was the end of my life. And God said, son, there are many that are holding on to the Ferris wheel of life. And there are others that are sitting comfortable while the world go round and round. But Tell my people, don't grab hold to the bar. Let it go, because sooner or later, the Ferris wheel is going to take a fast turn. And everybody that ain't strong enough is going to fall off the Ferris wheel, the bars of life. I'll see y'all tomorrow night. Y'all have a good night. Love you too. Bye.